Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in again. We have a ton of new features, updates, and brand new products if you haven't already heard that Amazon announced today. So let's get right into it. Now, I am going to use that voice assistant name here all over the place in this video. It's really unavoidable this time. So go ahead, mute your microphones like I do. The first thing to talk about are all the new devices and we're going to go through a ton here so get ready. Now the Amazon Echo Dot, this is the product right here, this is kind of their flagship product but what they've done is they've prettied this up more or less. It is 70% louder and it is a slightly larger device with that cloth finishing that we've seen on the second generation Echo devices. So big update to that flagship product. Just so we're clear, the price of the Echo Dot did not change at all either. It is still $49.99. Next up, this device right next to me, the Echo Plus, and this has been the basis, I think, for the big speaker wars that have started to go on. Now, Amazon's gone and blown that out of the water, but we'll We'll talk about that in a little bit here. The Amazon Echo Plus has gotten the same redesign or the same look as the Amazon Echo. So we have a cloth finish, but it is a wider and it appears a little bit shorter of a device. So it's got a little bit of a rounded figure in comparison to this early on device. Now on top of that, the sound is improved. There's still a Zigbee. Uh, hub right on board the second generation here of these devices and on top of all of that they've added something called local voice control so what they're talking about is a number of concerns that that people have they come on the channel they kind of say how are you guys doing this to your homes you're not going to be able to control anything, any of your lights or your plugs if you don't have internet connection. And that's what Amazon is dealing with here with local control. So they're starting with the ability to control lights without the internet being there at all and they're going to expand it out from there. So that's coming with this Amazon Echo Plus. There's no stated uh, integration of that feature with other devices as of yet. Again, the price for the Echo Plus hasn't changed. It's $149 US still today. I think everyone is going to want to know all about the Echo Show. There is a second generation coming out of the Echo Show. It's $229 US again, and what it's capable of is the full Zigbee control, just like the Echo Plus here. It's able also, it has a new 10 inch display, so it's a bigger display. It has a better speaker again, so it's improved that way as well. And it has the best array of microphones ever put together on an Alexa enabled device. It has eight microphones to listen to you. They've also added in some additional functionality in terms of voice chat or, or video calls rather with Skype. So this is an interesting partnership kind of deepening again what they've been doing with Microsoft and Cortana. We're talking about Skype now on an Amazon device. One last feature there, a new browser from Amazon called Silk will be on the Echo Show. So this is a, a new browser entirely. They will also include Firefox on there as well. Of course, they're not gonna include Chrome or anything from Microsoft in this case. We have a new Ring cam. It's called the Ring Stick Up Cam for $179. It's an indoor and outdoor camera and can be both wired and battery powered. So that's an interesting set of features. It remains to be seen though, I think just how hot and how cold that camera could get. We don't quite have the specifications on that yet. Something that I would say is a pretty different idea, a pretty different take on something that's already being done uh, is the Echo Auto. Now, the Echo Auto is not available for pre-order like the Echo Dot, the Echo Show, and the Echo Plus. Instead, Echo Auto is a device that is by invite only, but you can go on amazon.com right now and request to be invited when they start to push this device out. That will actually get you the product at $25 US instead of what it's going to be, which is the $50 US or $49.99. Now, Echo Auto is intended to use your cell phone as the visual component 
of Alexa's functionality. So you can bring up Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze, whatever you use, whatever you want to use, you can bring that up on your phone through Echo Auto. The thing with Echo Auto is that it is intended to be able to hear through all of that noise in your car. So it's really been specifically designed to work in that situation. The thing I actually think about this is it's going to have applications outside of the car. So it is using your cell phone as the uh, connection to the internet, but I wonder if this might get extended to other places very quickly. The Echo input is truly the answer to the Chromecast that I think we've all kind of been looking for from Amazon. Now, the Echo input is there and it's essentially a Chromecast audio connection. You can use a 3.5 millimeter jack on any speaker and you can go ahead and control that speaker with all of your Alexa capabilities. Now, the big speaker wars are definitely on here. We're always talking about multi-room audio here on the channel. That's what everyone really wants to get sorted out with their Amazon Echo devices. Now, what's happened is Amazon has put out two devices that I think are directly intended to attack both Apple HomePod and the Sono set of speakers here. What they've done is they put out the Echo Sub. Now the Echo Sub is $130 and it pairs with all of your Alexa enabled devices. So you're able to create multi-room audio and obviously that's going to fill out the lower end of the spectrum here. On top of that, they release the Echo Link. Now the Echo Link or the Link app is exactly what it sounds like. It's an amplifier, so it's it's like a shot, I think it's a shot at Sonos who have the Sonos amp that connects to speakers that are maybe in your ceiling, other, other speakers like that, or just your home theater speakers. That's what they're after here. So you have some connection ability to some older speakers. And again, that's all pairing together with Alexa and through the Echo series of products. Now at this point, I think everyone's heard about the Amazon Basics microwave. I'm not gonna go into a lot of details there, but it's a microwave controllable by your Alexa enabled devices. On top of that, and this is not something they're taking pre-orders for yet, the Amazon Echo wall clock. The point here, and it looks rather like uh, an older style clock, an analog clock, you know, but the, the point here is that you can set timers, get reminders all through this clock that are working with Amazon Alexa. So I think this is just Amazon exploring what they can and can't sell as a connected device. One of the things we're seeing out on the market today are a lot of over the air, so OTA channels. There's a number of those in the US and this is a segment that's growing. Amazon would like to tap into that with the Fire TV Recast. Now that device is capable of being a DVR for those over the air channels and connecting that to your Fire TV. So you're going to need the antenna to be able to go and grab those channels and then you can basically connect this Fire TV Recast to go ahead and record shows off of those services. Right now you can get a two tuner model with a 500 gigabyte DVR. That's a lot of space as far as I'm concerned. That's what I have. It's $229 US. There's also a $25 Amazon smart plug. So, you know, obviously we're getting a little bit of brand recognition here from Amazon with a smart plug. That's not something we've had for a while with a smart plug. There's just been a lot of manufacturers attacking that segment and nobody really winning out. Now, on top of all of this, when you're talking about launching this many products, and, and I think this is something that I love from Amazon, is they're thinking about the user experience and they're thinking about the problems that they're going to see so they're launching all of these products and they're saying you know what we're done with frustration within the setup process so we've seen that Amazon will save your Wi-Fi credentials for you and then your next device can pick up for that but we're getting a next generation and, and what they're calling frustration free setup here in your next generation of Amazon Echo devices. Another new feature out there from Amazon is called Alexa Guard. Now, Alexa Guard is essentially the usage of all of these Alexa enabled devices 
to secure your home. So you can actually put your device into an away mode. It will use smart lights and smart plugs and other devices that it's connected to within that away mode to notify you. So again, they're after this security segment a little bit. What we've seen kind of Samsung smart things do really well in and a couple other makers. And of course, of course, all of those those one-off secure home security companies that are charging you a monthly fee, Amazon's after them with this within their Amazon Echo series of devices. So there you go, guys. That is a ton of new products. It's crazy to think that Amazon has actually put this much out. I'm not sure how anyone can compete with this in the end. So, you know, what do you guys think? Is this the turning point in the war? We have all of these new Echo devices and it's hard to ignore how many different connected devices that Amazon now very specifically has for their ecosystem. You know, it's not like Google can come and take any of these devices and get connectivity. It's not like Apple can do the same thing. So what do you guys think about all of this? Anyways, leave it in the comments below. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.